It's Marcy Brockman. Welcome. This is the um, first installment of my expressive writing workshop. Um, and I would like to take you on a little journey. So I just published my memoir called Permission to Land, Searching for Love, Home, and Belonging that was compiled through using over 35 years of journals that I have been keeping in book form writing and in digital form. I have an app sometimes that I use to, to write. Um, expressive writing is a way for us to make sense out of the things that we've experienced, to make sense of our past, whether it's our childhood, um, adventures that we went on as children, or traumatic events, or any experience, um, memories of our grandparents, our siblings, how we got along with our parents, what personal, personality traits of our parents, or familial traditions that from the past do we bring forward into our present, and what from our past do we wanna bring forward into our future. Um, Expressive writing is something that I naturally did as an adolescent, uh, was in the middle of my parents' very tumultuous divorce, my mother's narcissism and uh, bipolarity, and she could be, she was Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hyde, you know, she could be Cruella DeVille one day, and she could be Snow White or June Cleaver in five minutes, there was no way to know, and the unpredictability was very hard for me to deal with. Um, and then my parents left and my, my parents divorced rather and my dad left and there was a lot of secrecy involved and a lot of trauma. And uh, the younger version of Marcy turned to um, writing, expressive writing in a journal. Um, and I talked about the events of what was going on and I talked about fights I had with my mom and things that were disagreements with my dad or silences of six months or more with my dad and boys that I was dating and friends and things that on with, went on with school. Basically anything and everything that had to do with my life, I wrote about. And what that did was it gave me a sense of control during a time where I had no control where I had very little control over what was going on in my life, being able to explain it and read it back to myself and then try to make sense out of it really helped me figure out who I was. And although I was decades before I fully trusted myself, what I heard were whisperings of my true and authentic self from deep inside. And through the process of writing all of this and naming the things that I was feeling, I took away some of their catastrophic negative power and turned it into something almost tangible that I could control, that I could explain, and that wasn't as at all frightening to me. Um, scientists, social scientists, psychologists talk about this and the power of expressive writing as a psychological tool, as a therapeutic tool to help people with this exact thing, gain control and a sense of, of um, focus in a place of vague and abstract trauma. Um, so what I did was I created a companion journal to Permission to Land called Permission to Land Personal Transformation Through Writing. And what this is, it's a skinny little book, but what this is, is it gives you over a hundred pages of writing prompts to basically walk you through the entire process that I underwent with the memoir, per, uh, personal, uh, Permission to Land Searching for Love, Home and Belonging, because in my quest, searching for a home, literally and physically uh, and figuratively, searching for love in every way I could be loved and, and express love and belonging, which is a true sense of community and of being a part of something in a very authentic way, not having to fit in with something, but to naturally be myself and to automatically, naturally, uh, organically fit in. And that's what uh, organically connect, which is what belonging is. Um, so what I would like to do uh, is share my screen. I created a little um, Google Slides presentation to help walk you through some of this um, and, uh, and we'll try it. So um, I strongly suggest that you order the book. You can order Personal Transformation Through Writing through my website at marcybrockman.com. 
I just got a few of, of a load of them in stock. I can send them out immediately. Um, or you can order them through Amazon or Barnes and Noble or wherever you order books or buy books. They're, they're there. I don't know if they're in bookstores yet because it literally just was published like last week. I just got copies of it today. Um, so it's brand new. No one has ever seen this before. You guys are the first to actually see it and work with it. All right, so let's put on the glasses so I can see what I'm doing. And we'll do a share screen desktop and share. Okay, so here we are. Here's my Zoom screen. Here's the slideshow. Okay, so we have Expressive Writing Workshop. Owning a story and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing that we will ever do. Brene Brown, she's a genius. I think she's the cat's pajamas, so to speak. I just love Brene Brown. Um, everybody's story is different. Everyone's story is unique. And yet we are all connected in our shared humanity. Okay, so expressive writing is like journaling. It's the cornerstone of wellness and writing connections. So you may be here visiting and have found yourself to this place and wonder what this is and how this is related to your wellness. Well, expressive writing comes from deep inside you. It's personal and emotional writing. You don't have to pay attention to grammar or mechanics or punctuation or spelling or anything because you're the only person who's gonna be writing it. You don't have to censor yourself. I don't want you to worry about editing to craft your sentences or do any of those authorial or um, writerly kinds of things. You're just undertaking each exercise just to, to basically brain dump what's in your brain and open up your heart and pour it out. That's all you're gonna do. I do this with my students every year. I'm a high school English teacher and I do this with my students every year for the last like 25 years. And they usually say it's their favorite thing that we do every year, you know, that we do every day. Um, they get to write about all sorts of things. And we have um, lots of stimulus for you to write about here. So expressive writing, you can't see it because of this picture of me. Let's move this. Expressive writing pays more attention to feelings than the events, memories, or objects, or people in the contents of a narrative or story. Expressive writing is not so much what happened as it is how you feel about what happened or is happening. Of course, you can narrate events and experiences as you remember them, include as much detail as you're comfortable with, as much detail as you remember, and how all of those pieces caused you to feel and behave. Um, because really what you're trying to get at are your feelings and your behaviors, because those are the things that are gonna help you learn to trust your authentic voice inside of you. What, uh, what uh, Glennon Doyle ca calls your wild, your wild inside you, that untamed piece that's inside you that you may have trouble hearing. Okay, next slide. All right, so you're gonna really let go and really explore your deepest emotions and thoughts about anything and everything, including the most traumatic experiences in your entire life, because the traumatic experiences are what are gonna maybe what connects your different your parts of your life together, your childhood, your relationships to others, including your parents, lovers, friends, relatives, and anyone else is important to you, important teachers or mentors or clergymen or whoever it is that you, that you feel that you've connected with over the years. Um, and like I said in the beginning, um, my personal familial trauma is what set me on the path to doing this journal writing, this expressive writing in the first place. Um, and my relationship with my mom, my relationship with my parents, my relationship with my family, and how I saw myself within that is really what became the template from my relationships with almost every other person that I've ever met, including my relationship with myself. It's very important to remember is that these things that you're gonna be writing about are really meant to help you feel better about you and get to know your authentic self in a way that you never have before. Um, so you might link your writing to your future also, who you would like to become. You're gonna take your authentic self that you've learned from your past experiences and who you are now and try to figure out who that person is and what you want for your future, where your goals are. Realize that you don't have to ask permission to go after any of your goals or to be who you're gonna be. You 
are just going to allow yourself to be free and vibrate to your own, the, 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 the beat of your own drummer or your own heartstring. Mix some metaphors there, but I think you understand. Um, so not everyone has a single trauma. Some of us have multiple traumas. Some of us don't really have any traumas. We've had a rather, you know, um, predictable, non-traumatic life. But all of us have had conflicts in our lives and stressors, and you can write about those as well. All your writing is confidential. There will be no sharing of content. I'm not going to ask anybody to share within here. You're taking this on your own, in your own pace, in your own safe, uh, safe place. Um, you can feel free to share what you want to share. Um, when I was reading, when I was writing my memoir, I mean, I've never shared my journals with anybody in 35 years. Nobody's ever seen the insides of those books. But when I was writing the memoir, I let my dad read the first hundred pages or so of my first draft. And it really opened up a lot of very interesting dialogue for us and allowed us to talk about things we hadn't actually talked about in more than three decades. And we now have a much better relationship because he was able to understand me better through what I wrote. But that takes an, an, an extra level of bravery and, um, uh, and a different kind of relationship with, um, with your parents. I could never have done that with my mother. She was intolerant of, of those things. Um, anyway, I digress. Okay, so what's on your mind and what's in your heart? Are there instructions on how to do this? How do we do this so that we can benefit from it? Okay, so here are very few rules and you're gonna follow these rules when you're working on this um, today with this, with this uh, workshop. So there's a time. You're gonna write for a minimum of 10 to 20 minutes per day. 10 to 20 minutes per writing prompt. Um, ideally, you'll do this every day, but you should do it at least four days a week. You can set the timer on your phone or your oven timer or even your Alexa, you know, Alexa set a timer for 10 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever. And then I want you to write nonstop. We'll get that to number three. Um, the topic, you're going to write about whatever you want, but make sure it's personal and real. Using the writing prompts can help you direct your writing, give you inspiration and a direction in which to head. So if you get the book or when you get the book, you can go in order. I, I sort of designed it so that you would go in order. It leads you in a specific path, but you know, there's no expressive writing police. You can do whatever order you want. If you're not in the mood for a particular question one day, you can skip and skip around. It's completely fine. Uh, you're gonna do this to your own comfort. You're gonna, number three, you're gonna write continuously. So you're gonna set your timer for 10 to 20 minutes and you're gonna write the entire time that you've allotted. Do not stop, even if you deviate from your original plan or from the original writing prompt. The idea is to keep writing and not picking up your pen or pencil or take your fingers away from your keyboard. Um, and then you're gonna write only for yourself. It's confidential until you feel comfortable enough, if ever, to let somebody read it. Now, here's another thing. You, you may want to take your favorite pen, I happen to like these, uh, these little Pentel purple gel ink pens. These are my favorite. I write everything in these. I buy them by the, by the box. Um, and you may want to take your favorite pen and actually pen to paper and fill in and write right in the book. You may not want to do that. You may want to take the, the questions and type them into a Word document or um, an Apple, you know, Mac Pages document or in a Google Doc and, and write that way. All right, so you're gonna be prepared for floods of emotions. Sometimes when we write from the heart about personal things, things that are emotionally charged, full of memories, full of, <clears throat> full of pain, we can bring up, we can dredge up all sorts of feelings. We can feel sad, we can feel anxious, we can feel angry, we can remember feelings of elation and joy. You may cry while you're writing. Um, I want you to allow yourself the space, give yourself the permission to feel all of those things um, and really get into it. You know, I, I think you'll find that you're gonna get into it the more, the more time you do it. And then the sixth step is reflection and processing. Give yourself time to process what you wrote and what you felt, how it made you feel, what memories you evoked. Um, and this is really the meat and potatoes of the process. This is really where the psychological healing and the psychological growth is going to come. 
um, because it's going to take you where you want to go as long as you give yourself the breathing time and the processing time and space to do this the right way. Um, you might want, not want to do more than one or two questions a day. Maybe you want to take it slower. Maybe you're the type that likes to jump in with both feet and you want to do more than that. Um, you can do this to your own tolerance. Okay, so now here's the process. We're going to try this right now. You're going to set a timer on your phone if you want for 10 minutes. We'll just do it for 10 minutes for now, but you're the one that's in control. So if you want to do 12 minutes or 15 or 20, you feel free to change that. But we're going to, just for argument's sake, we're going to start with 10. So I'm going to show you a writing prompt to write about, and you're going to write about it for the entire 10 minutes. So, and then you should pause the video while you're writing and then restart it when you're done and move on to the next prompt. So I'm not gonna stop, I'm gonna keep this going um, for the recording purposes, but you're gonna set a timer. So you're gonna take out your phone right now or your Alexa, sorry for the arm, I have a light that I have to move. I don't really think it's doing anything. I think it died, so let's just shut it off anyway. All right, so you're gonna take your phone and you're gonna set the timer Go to your alarm clock and you can set your timer for 10 minutes and then you're going to hit start as soon as I click to the next slide and then I'll read it and then you can click start. Okay, so here, here's the first slide. So set your timer for 10 minutes and get ready to write. Here's the first prompt. How would I describe myself in 15 words? So now you can just list 15 words, but I want them to be really good words. And then you might want to go back. My strong suggestion is, is that you write the 15 words and as you do, you explain what you mean so that you remember yourself, so that you can dredge it out. You can flesh the whole thing out. So set your timer for 10 minutes. How would I describe myself in 15 words? Ready? Go. Okay, now you're, re I'm assuming you've restarted. Now you can hear me talking again. We're gonna move on to the next slide. Okay, so now here, set your timer for 10 minutes again. And now you're gonna write about my favorite way to spend the day is. And now you're gonna finish the sentence and then just keep going, right? For the entire time, just keep going. You talk about favorite way to spend the day now, favorite way to spend the day when you were a kid, do what you think of your favorite, your favorite way to spend the day in your future might be, whatever, however way you interpret it. So set it for 10 minutes and go. Okay, now restart. We're gonna move on to the third slide. Now remember, you don't have to do all this in one day. You can stop and start however way you wanna do it. Okay, third slide, set your timer for 10 minutes. Now you're gonna write about, what do I love about my life right now? Really think about it. Close your eyes, live in your life. Imagine all of the different measurements and all of the different people, all the different relationships, all the different types of days that you have and write about what you love about your life. This is where you're gonna express gratitude and love and joy. So set your timer for 10 minutes and go. Okay, now you're gonna start, you're gonna stop, and we're gonna restart. Here's the next slide. You're gonna set your timer for 10 minutes and get ready to write. As a child, now you're thinking in the, in the past, as a child, what were my dreams? What did you want? Ballerina, dancer, fireman, teacher, millionaire, moved to Fiji, what did you want? Okay, now we're gonna move on to the next slide. Set your timer for 10 minutes and get ready to write. What does unconditional love mean to me? This is a heavy one. What does it feel like? What does unconditional love feel like? And with whom have I shared this kind of love? Or if, um, if you are one of the unfortunate people or the 
unlucky, painful people who have not experienced their definition of unconditional love. Maybe you want to talk about who you wish you had shared unconditional love with or who, who you would like to in the future. Interpret these however they make sense for you. Ready? Set the timer for 10 minutes. Okay, now we're back. We're moving on to the next slide. Remember for each one, you're stopping and starting the video. So now we're gonna set our timer for 10 minutes again and get ready to write. How did my parents' personalities and habits influence me to become who I am? This is very foundational in figuring out what your templates are as for behavior and relationships, etc. What your emotional and behavioral template is. How did my parents' personalities and habits influence me to become who I am? Timer for 10 minutes, go. Okay, now you're gonna stop. Now we're gonna go to the next one. Set your timer for 10 minutes and get ready to write. What traditions have been passed down through the generations of my family and what feelings do they evoke? This is a good one. Foods, holidays, who you celebrated them with, what did you do, what was the atmosphere like. It's all very evocative and very emotional. Ten minutes, go. Okay, now we move on to the next one. I'm going to set your timer for ten minutes again and get ready to write. If I could talk to my teenage self, the one piece of advice I would give is as a grown-up now, or whatever age you are now, what would you tell your younger self? Begin. Okay, now we're gonna move on again. Set your timer for 10 minutes again and get ready to write. How do you deal with conflict? How do I deal with conflict? How do I deal with differences of opinion with friends, with family? with coworkers. This kind of thing is very important in how we manage our day-to-day -day relationships with people, with the people that we see, the people we love, the people we care about, the people related to, the people we work with. There's a lot of divisiveness in the world. So how do you deal with conflict? Get ready to write. Ready? Remember, you're stopping and starting the video each time. You start it, stop the video to write and restart it to move on to the next slide, the next writing prompt. Okay, next slide. Set the timer for 10 minutes and get ready to write. How has love, romance, and sex influenced my choices and decisions? This is another huge question. I could write for this alone for hours. But for now, for our purposes, we're saying 10 minutes, but you can be consistent and write for the same 20 minutes or whatever it's that you've been doing, or write longer for certain questions and others, depending on what you have to say, and obviously go back and write as much about each one that, that touches you or that stimulates you or influences you or inspires you as, as you want. Okay, so ready? Now we're gonna move on to the next one. Set your timer for 10 minutes and get ready to write. Now we're gonna lighten it up a little bit because we got a little heavy there with a couple of questions. Now we'll lighten it up a little bit and get a little breathing room here. So now you're gonna make a list of 30 things that make you smile, make you happy. Put a smile on your beautiful face. Ready, go. Okay. Now let's continue. All right, many of us have vast collections of photographs and they have the power to evoke memories and feelings too. Try looking through your own photographs and write about what they trigger for you. I, I have boxes and boxes of photographs dating back to the 30s and 40s, even a few even before that of my great grandmother's generation in the very early uh, part of the 20th century. And you could go through your own photographs and write about the photos 
who's in them and what they remind you of, your relationships with them, what events were, evoking feelings and all sorts of things. Um, when I'm in my classroom with my high school students, sometimes we do questions like we have been doing, writing prompts like those. Sometimes we do quotations from famous people. And sometimes I take works of art, um, visual works of art or photographs, and we write about those, the feelings that they evoke. Sometimes we just write narratives because, you know, it's an English class, so we can do creative things too. Um, and you can feel free to uh, write about any of them the way you, you want. So I have a few photographs here. Um, that we can write about too. Um, so here, you're going to set your timer for 10 minutes and you're going to write about this. Maybe we're writing about childhood friends or we're writing about siblings or cousins. What does this photo remind you of? The feelings, the emotions behind it, the relationships, okay? So you're going to set your timer for 10 minutes and you're going to get ready to write. Ready? So now here's the next one. You're gonna set your timer for 10 minutes and get ready to write. Maybe you're gonna make the woman in this photograph yourself and you've just gotten some good news or your favorite song or a movie was released or a concert you wanna to go to or you ha heard from somebody you hadn't heard of in a long time or maybe you're the person who's sending the message. You can look at this in a variety of ways but you're gonna write about it for at least 10 minutes. Ready? Okay, let's move on to the next one. Set your timer for 10 minutes and get ready to write. So now you can be this little boy who loves his dog. You can be the dog. You can remember your own childhood pets or the pets that you have now or pets you would like to get in the future, but you're gonna talk about love for animals, your relationship with animals in your life. Ready? 10 minutes. Stop. Now we're going to go on to the next one. You're going to set your timer for 10 minutes and you're going to get ready to write now. So now this could be mother, daughter, aunt, niece, godmother, goddaughter, could be stepmom and stepdaughter, could be sisters, older sister, younger sister, could be teacher and a student, like an, a, a, an elementary school or an aftercare teacher, whatever you want. Ready? 10 minutes, go. Okay, now you're gonna go on to the next one. Set your timer again. And you're gonna write an, about this one for 10 minutes. Now we're looking at a, an obvious romantic relationship. All right, ready? Set the timer for 10 minutes and go. Okay, stop. Now we're gonna to go to the next one. This one's a little sad. Set your timer for 10 minutes and get ready to write. This is all emotional, this one. What is this little boy feeling? What does it remind you of? Have you ever felt this way? Why have you felt this way? What made you feel this way? How did you get over feeling this way? Okay, 10 minutes, go. Okay. Next, set your timer for 10 minutes and get ready to write. Feelings, what does this evoke? It's a very evocative photo. Go. Okay, now that's it. So how did that feel? Hopefully it was cathartic, it was difficult, it was challenging, it was emotional, it made you think about things you hadn't thought about in a long time, it made you realize a few things about yourself. Um, so you wrote about 11 writing prompts and seven photographs if you've done this whole thing while exploring some stuff, some ideas, some feelings, some memories, some values. How did you feel? I've been doing this for 35 years and what this does is it helps me figure out how I feel about all of these things events, emotions, experiences, dreams, relationships, my family, my children, my friends, my parents' divorce, my divorce, my remarriage, blending families. How do I feel about my life as a teacher, as a, an artist, as an author, um, 
what do I feel about politics? How do I feel about what's going on in the universe, about COVID-19 and everything else? Um, and this is interesting that, I, that I, I really wanted to mention. There have been times where I have been so in the zone writing, so focused on, on really describing exactly what an event was or how I felt about something. And then when I went back at a later date to, and I reread what I wrote, I didn't remember it at all. It was like someone else had written it. It was like it was a completely brand new thing. And I'm not talking like 30 years later. I mean like a month later or even a week later, I would reread what I wrote and it seemed completely foreign. I, I know now as a 52 year old, if I go back into the box that I have all my journals in and I go back and I read some things that I wrote when I was 15 and 16 years old, there are some things there I have no memory of whatsoever. I don't remember the people who I was so involved with and so upset about or into or whatever. I don't remember some of them at all. I don't know why. Memory. Okay, so um, here, this is the process. Um, I want you to keep at it. You're gonna start to see patterns in your own behavior. You're going to start to see patterns in your, your, the people that you have relationships with, your parents, your siblings, your cousins, your um, spouses or boyfriends or girlfriends or partners or whoever. You're going to start to see how all this fits together. You know, like when I was 17, when I was 19 or I was 25, I, I saw certain things that my mom did, certain things that my dad did that I didn't understand. And, and I behaved in whatever way I behaved, but I didn't always understand why I was behaving that way or why they were behaving that way. And, and what writing like this did for me and still does for me is it allows me to take a long view back over my whole life. And I can see, okay, I fought with my mom over these things. And when she became this way and said this type of thing, I always felt defensive or I always felt shame, I always felt embarrassed, I always felt guilty, and that caused me to behave this way. And then you can start to see, well, okay, so when my husband acts this way, it triggers that thing with my mom, and, and, and that memory of that shame reaction shows up, and that's why I show up defensively. You know, you can start making sense out of these things, and the way we stop trauma from the past, from intruding on our present and impeding our success in the future is by making sense out of it now and by putting it in a, in a context that makes sense to us and then we don't have to deal with it anymore. We don't have to carry it around anymore. And this was exactly what I did in my memoir. Um, I, walk, I walked myself through my whole life um, not completely in chronological order. I mean, it, it sort of just happens organically. Um, and I, I, I strongly suggest that you start, uh, that you buy both books and, um, and allow yourself to take the journey with me and see what I learned and how I behaved and what worked for me and what didn't. And um, I don't cut myself any slack in this. Book. You know, I'm as hard on myself as I am on everybody else because I wanted to learn something about myself out of it and I wanted my readers to learn something about themselves through the reading of it. Um, and I'm getting a lot of responses from readers who say, you know, that my description of my maternal grandmother reminds them of their grandmother or my relationship with my stepsisters reminds them of their relationships with their cousins or their sisters or, you know, they had same kinds of fights with their mom that I had and, you know, we handled things differently or we handled things the same, but it hel helped them make sense out of it all. Um, and then you can continue the process, maybe do it concurrently, that might be a nice therapeutic thing, and work your way through. Now what I've given you in this workshop that we just did was 11 of the writing prompts. There are over 100 of them in this book that you can work your way through. I didn't include photographs because I didn't have the copyright of the photographs to include in here, but um, you can certainly Google any photographs that you want. You can go to the website Unsplash, U-N-S-P-L-A-C-H dot com, and they have all sorts of photographs there that you can use for all sorts of purposes. But what really is the most impactful is to go through your own photos and your own um, photo albums or photo boxes and use your own pictorial family history to inspire you and to help you figure out how you feel about all of these things. So keep at it. This was just the beginning. Try to establish 
um, three or four days a week at least that you're going to write. Maybe you want to set a specific time of day. You write first thing in the morning or you write after lunch or you write right before bed. When I was a teenager and for like the first 20 years, maybe 25 years that I was keeping journals, I did it longhand in, uh, in a blank book. And I kept my favorite pen, which wasn't this because it wasn't invented yet when I was a teenager, um, and the book on my nightstand or in my nightstand hidden in between other things so no one else could find it. Um, sometimes I stuck it between my mattress and the box spring and I slid it in there so no one would see it. Um, and I wrote every single day. I wrote every single night right before bed and everything that happened during the day, everything that I felt about during the day, things that I, I anything and everything went out on the page. Um, so hopefully you do this and you start to see some results from it. Um, and I'd love to hear back from you. You can email me back at marcybrockman at gmail.com and let me know how you're doing. Or you can visit me on Facebook. You can visit me at my website, marcybrockman.com. You can track me down on my blog, What's Up Marcy at whatsupmarcy.com or on my YouTube channel, um, which at What's Up Marcy. Um, any, anywhere you want. Um, and I also have a Facebook group called Permission to, um, Permission to Heal, Safe to Fly, um, where we talk and share about all sorts of things having to do with everything that we talked about today. Um, so you can certainly find me. Um, this was lovely chatting with you, lovely being here with you with this process, and um, hopefully you continue along your healing journey um, and enjoy what expressive writing as a regular practice can do for your soul, can do for your life, can do for your heart, can do for the clarity of purpose as you move forward to living a happy and wonderful life filled with all the love, home, and belonging you could ever want. Thanks for joining me. This is Marcy Brockman. Love you all. How do I stop recording? Kate's got glasses on.